When you're a kid, everything is freaking crazy, man. You're experiencing so much stuff for the first time ever. There's school, people, animals, gravity, morality, anxiety, pain, quantum mechanics, the fragility of life in an uncaring universe bugs. Every little thing you can think of is totally new and unheard of. And we all react to stuff differently at that age. Some of us were curious kids who wanted to climb every tree, turn over every rock, and whatever else baby boomers complain kids don't do anymore. Others were more quiet and reserved growing up. They just liked to keep to themselves, draw, read, play video games. And then others just... It cried. A lot. Yeah, that one was me. Wimp! You've probably seen other animated storytellers talk about how they were a weird kid, but I don't know if that fits me. <coughs> okay, that's a lie. My imaginary friend was a shape-shifting purple ferret named Benjamin, and one time I tried to make up a holiday about a paper platypus so that I could ask my parents for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I was absolutely a weird kid. But in this video, I wanna go in a different direction and tell some stories about how I, foot of a ferret, was a sensitive kid. <laughs> Ow. My sensitivity showed itself in a lot of embarrassing ways growing up. Well, mainly two ways. Crying and trembling in fear. Seriously, I was really easy to scare growing up. But not in the, oh, I'm gonna sneak up behind you and yell boo kind of way. More like the, I just saw something that has shaken me to my core and now I won't sleep for a week kind of way. Tons of stuff rendered me sleepless and terrified as a kid. Werewolves, zombies, TV shows, music videos, toys, t-shirts, Ernie from Sesame Street. <laughs> I'm not kidding. One time as a kid, I was watching Sesame Street and there was this bit where Bert and Ernie were exploring a pyramid. They found a statue that looked like Ernie dressed as a pharaoh and when Ernie's back was turned, it would come to life and pull pranks on him. Sounds pretty silly and fun, right? Nope. Nah! -uh. They'd play this creepy music, and Ernie would be so scared he was basically shaking. And the statue just had this face, and it just holds on this face. Even watching it now, it kind of freaks me out. And I was sat there watching this on a big TV, in the dark, alone, and I became so scared that I had to yell for someone to turn it off. I was too young to even know how to turn off the TV or change the channel. And for years, I couldn't even look at Ernie, which sucked because he was my favorite Muppet. But anytime I saw him after that, I just imagined that face. Uh, speaking of puppets, when I was in third grade, my family and I all went to Disney World! The ultimate dream for every kid. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do first. Let me go all defunct land on you guys real quick. Back in 2004, a new attraction was introduced at the Magic Kingdom called Stitch's Great Escape. It was this big immersive experience where a bunch of people would be spectators to... Yeah, the focus of the show was a giant animatronic Stitch puppet in the center of the theater, which in of itself isn't that freaky. Okay, maybe a little freaky. I saw ads for this ride on Disney Channel for months before our trip, and I just knew that this was the first thing I wanted to do when we got to the Magic Kingdom. But for some reason, as soon as we got in line for the ride, all my excitement and childhood whimsy totally disappeared, and suddenly, I was terrified. I think this was one of my earliest experiences with anxiety. I too. I'm a Disney fan. I told my parents that I was having second thoughts, but we were deep in the line at that point. There was no going back. We get inside, sit down in our seats, and then... <laughs> okay, I didn't actually scream, but I was not ready for that giant otherworldly robot stitch. It was way bigger than I thought it would be. And it towers over you. Luckily, I remember actually having a good time on the ride once I got settled in. But years later, I decided to do a little bit of research into the attraction and oh my God, did I get off easy as a kid. Before it got the Stitch makeover, the ride was called Alien Encounter and just look at this. Pretty sure if baby Fofi had gone on this ride, 
he would have died. So I made it through a children's theme park show unscathed. But unfortunately, that really anxious hesitation never really went away while I was at Disney. I feel kind of bad in retrospect, cause my dad didn't get to go on a handful of rides during the trip because I was too scared and he'd have to stay behind and look after me. You know, the happiest place on earth. Walk around terrified of everything and ruin the trip for your entire family. Book now at www. Go. But when I wasn't getting scared by harmless media made specifically for people my age and younger, I was crying at well, everything. When I was in elementary school, I remember crying more than I remember anything I learned in class. Literally from day one, no, even before day one in school, I was crying. The very first time my parents brought me to school was for some kindergarten orientation day or whatever. I honestly didn't have a clue what was going on or why I was in this room full of other kids. But none of that really mattered because as soon as my parents left, I freaked out. I was terrified to be on my own, so... I bolted out the classroom door, ran down the hallway, bust through the school entrance, and just stood there, wondering where my mom and dad went. Why did they leave me? As a kid, I was just scared and torn up that my parents were gone. I didn't know if I'd ever see them again, so that was all I cared about in that moment. But as an adult, I now realize just how horrified the teachers must have been. They were put in charge of keeping a group of three to four year olds safe while their parents were at work. And then one of them, me, just broke down and ran away. I got outside the building. They must have been in total panic mode. My dad was called and I went home early. That was not a good omen for my school career. One day, years later, I was in the lunch line and accidentally slammed my tray into a teacher's hand. It was an honest mistake, something that happens all the time. She jokingly acted like she was in pain just for a gag, but I was devastated. I felt so tremendously awful for destroying this woman's hand. She'll never play baseball again! I don't remember the specifics, but I'm sure I started babbling and stuttering, not knowing how to respond, and suddenly I just got so overwhelmed that... <laughs> Eyeballed, crumbled under my own guilt and broke down in the middle of the lunch line. I sat down at the lunch table and started eating, still gross sobbing. <laughs> when eventually I get called to the office. Oh Lord, no. They're gonna expel me for shattering a teacher's hand. I'll end up on the streets, a delinquent, living in a box and begging for change like Squidward did in that one episode of SpongeBob I saw last night. My future is gone! But when I got to the office, my dad was there to take me home. Yeah, apparently my little episode convinced the staff to call my parents and send me home early. They probably thought I was just super emotionally unstable or going through some rough stuff. But I wasn't, and hey, I got to leave school early, my dad took me for ice cream, and at the end of the day, I didn't actually do anything wrong. Sadness, it gets you out of school. Later that same year, I was in PE class. The teachers broke us up into groups and we all had to take turns jumping rope. Now, uh, a fun fact about baby Fofi, I don't know why, but I never wore belts. I was a bit of a pudgy kid, so I guess I just never needed to. But on this particular day, I, uh, I really should have been wearing a belt. I was hiking my pants up all day. Annoying, but not really a problem. At that age, I was just in my own little world, never really thinking about others' opinion of me. I used to Naruto run in gym class because I thought it'd make me go faster. I had no shame in hiking my pants up every five seconds. But waiting in line for my turn at the jump rope suddenly caused the cogs to start turning in my head. Hands, hold up pants, but need hands to hold jump rope. Oh no. I knew what was about to happen. But instead of saying something to a teacher or doing literally anything at all, I just stood there waiting, dreading what was about to happen. One kid takes their turn, then another, then another, and then I was up. You know, maybe I was just worrying for nothing. It's just jump rope. What could possibly go? <laughs> 
Yep. The worst case scenario happened immediately and I accidentally dropped Trow in the middle of the gym. I know I'm making this out like it was some big slow motion travesty and everyone pointed and laughed, but in reality, it all happened in like one second and I don't think anyone even noticed. But that didn't stop Lil Felthy from running to the corner and crying like a baby. <laughs> The rest of the day is a total blur to me at this point, but I do remember a teacher had to pull me over in the next class because I was still so embarrassed and inconsolable. And keep in mind, no one even noticed that my pants fell. No one made fun of me, no one pointed it out, and heck, no one was even paying attention. But in my mind, that was the single most humiliating thing that could have ever happened to me. So I guess I was just crying because it happened and I couldn't take it. But all that, that was elementary school. By the time I moved up to middle school, I totally matured and grew out of it. Except for the time in sixth grade when I got a zero on my homework and broke down crying in class. Okay, that's enough about crying. Am I embarrassed of how overly sensitive I could be as a kid? Yeah, a little bit, I guess. But it was all so long ago that what's the point in sweating it? I've matured a lot since then. And at this point, all these embarrassing stories are just something to laugh at. I'm not that sensitive little kid anymore. Now I'm an adult who puts himself out there publicly on the internet for over 600,000 strangers. Please be nice. So yeah, I was a pretty sensitive kid. A lot of stuff freaked me out growing up. But one of the quickest ways to cheer me up back then was music. Aw, <coughs> oh, hey, come on, don't cry. Here, maybe this will calm your nerves. Yeah, I've always been a music lover. I pretty much have some form of music playing 24 seven in my house, whether I'm listening to it or making it myself. So naturally, good sound quality is super important to me, which is why I'm excited to say that today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon make these wireless earbuds that are legit incredible. I'm serious, sponsor aside, I immediately fell in love with these things. They are totally on par with other top audio brands Brands, but for half the price. And when I sat down to write this sponsor spot, I'm not gonna lie, I accidentally got distracted and spent like half an hour just listening to music with them. Yes, I'm dancing around my living room to Carly Rae Jepsen, but it's for work, dang it! The amount of bass they have is perfect, the sound is crystal clear, and again, they're wireless. I actually decided to test this a bit and started listening to a song in my bedroom, left my phone there, walked all the way to the other side of the house, and it was still connected. Wait, where's my phone? Bluetooth pairing is quick and simple. They hold a charge for five hours of listening time. That's enough to listen to Hamilton twice. They're totally compact, comfortable, noise isolating, and come in a ton of cool colors. Seriously guys, I've been doing a lot of music composing and production work in my free time, and I cannot wait to start using these earbuds to listen to mixes. And I also can't wait for you guys to hear some of the stuff I've been working on. And if you wanna make sure you hear it all in high quality, quality and high comfort, then you should absolutely consider picking up a pair of Raycon earbuds. And now's the time to do it too, because if you head down to the top link in my description or go to buyraycon.com slash ferret, you can snag a pair of these bad boys for 15% off. Again, that link is buyraycon.com slash ferret or the very top link in the description. Major thanks to Raycon for sponsoring, thanks to all of you guys for watching, and until next time, DFTBA. Actually, I didn't say DFTBA in the last video either, so I should say it a second time. A DFTBA. <laughs>